We're going to create a program to determine how many days, months, etc. until our user's next birthday. The first thing I need to do is ask my user when their birthday is. So I need a user input for month and a user input for day. And as always, if I'm going to have inputs, I should always validate them and make sure that my user inputs are correct. For these inputs, I'm going to take a shortcut and I'm not going to make them accept strings. So I'm not putting in that second prompt to accept strings. So if my user inputs a string, MATLAB will automatically create a red error. I don't like this ideally, but it's okay and it is a workaround to just be a little bit faster and I don't have to deal with the string to double and all of that. But if you want to do that part, check out my other videos related to strings. The month is a little easier than the day. I just need to make sure that it's not empty and it actually is a number that's between one and 12 and it's a whole number. So for whole numbers, I can use the mod function. I'm using the rounding function here. You can use any rounding function to check and make sure it is a whole number by just saying a rounded version is not equal to the original version, then it's not a whole number. And as always, it's a great idea to give our users some type of message to tell them why we're not accepting their input and why we're asking them again, rather than just continuously asking again and again and again. So day is a little bit trickier because I can't just assume one through 31 because not every month has 31 days. So here I've created a vector that has the set number of days for each month. And notice I put 29 for February because people can have a birthday on leap day. So you'll see in this vector I'm creating, I have 31 in the first position and that's representative of how many days in January. I have 29 in the second position representative of how many days for February. So then to extract how many days it is for that month, I'm just going to slice out whatever month they input. I'm gonna slice that day out of this day list. And that's what I can use for my while loop to air check and make sure that, okay, my user is selecting a day that's within that particular month. And it's always good to check our code. So we always wanna make sure to run when we make progress. So running my code, making sure that the months are working the way that I want them to work, the days are working the way I want them to work. I'm tracking with valid values and invalid values. That way I know that my validation process and my air checking, my user stopping is actually working. So that's important. The next thing I need to do is I need to establish the other date that I'm comparing to. So I'm going to compare it to today. And that's an easy one. So it's just the date time function. And I'm just going to say today. So for date time, I only need the month, day, and year. So I have to add another input argument in for format. Then I specify month, day, year. Now, in addition to the time that I have, that's the total time that I'm going to compare to, I also need to extract just the year by itself because I need to think about the context of the situation. Now, if your birthday has already happened this year, I don't want to determine how many days until your birthday that already happened. I want to figure out how many days to your birthday that's going to happen. So I'm going to put on a year of 2023 or whatever plus one is for the current year. That way I'm looking at a birthday that's going to be happening next year, not your birthday that happened this year. And so once I have this year, I'm going to just go ahead and convert it to a number instead of working with the date time, because I don't really need to be working with date time here. I can just look at that number, do some addition to it so I can add a year to it, and then I can convert it back to a date time when I need to use it as a date time. And to determine when I'm going to add, just like I said, I had a condition, I had multiple scenarios, so I have an if statement. So I have this if statement here that's looking at when is your birthday, to look at if your birthday is coming up in the future, to look at if it already happened, or to see if your birthday is today. So if your birthday is today, I just decided to put in happy birthday and not put the duration. If your birthday is going to be tomorrow, yesterday, or anything like that, then it's going to figure out the duration. So even if your birthday was yesterday, it'll determine how many days until and months and everything until it is next year, which would be, again, just from yesterday. And if your birthday starts tomorrow, anything forward, again, it's just going to say when your birthday is this year. So anytime we're working with these if statements, it's really important to make sure that we map out like all the different situations that we're thinking about, all the different circumstances, and our if statement is addressing those. So just the way that I did with this if statement for my birthday. So once I finally have all these calculations done, I have this if statement done, then I know when my user's next birthday is. So I can use the month as the user input, the day as the user input, and then the year that I determined in this if statement and now I have their birthday established. And again, I already have today from that date time today previously. Next, I'm going to use the between function. This is a function that will take two dates and then determine the amount of duration between the two dates. So I could stop here and I'm done. I've kind of completed the necessities of what I'm doing in my program, but as always, I like to make it look nicer instead of just having it spit out an unsuppressed term. I'm going to use fprintf. So I'm going to go in and show how many months, days, hours, and minutes until their next birthday. So now between is again going to give me duration, which is just a different data type to work with. I can't just display this in fprintf and I can't just slice it the way I would slice a normal vector or a string. So I'm going to use the split function to get the information out that I need. 
which in this case is going to be days, months, and time. So time is going to come out as hours and minutes and seconds and all of that as its own thing. Um, I can't just split out hours and minutes with the split function. So again, I still need those hours and minutes. So the hours function is a function I can use to extract the number of hours out of the duration to make it in a data type that's double. So I can use it for this fprintf. And now my hours are all of my hours and minutes combined together. So it's just in the units hours, but I have a decimal. So that's going to represent the minutes. So I could extract this information either using floor or using mod. In this situation, I went about using floor. So mod would just give me the remainder. If I took the mod of the time, that could give me the information as well. But again, with this approach, I just floored the number of hours. So I get rid of the decimal. And then I know that's my number of hours. And then I can take my total time minus that hours that I calculated. And then I know that's my remaining minutes. But again, I have to multiply it by 60 because again, it's in hours and not in minutes. So multiply it by 60 gives it to me in minutes. So remember, always be aware of your units and anything that you're doing. And yes, that took a little bit of extra time to, again, display this information in the form of an fprintf instead of just having it display on my command window by not suppressing it. But I always think it's a good practice to make sure that your inputs and your outputs are formatted in a way that is user friendly and it adds your own voice to it and you can determine how you want to communicate with your user. And as always, running your code is important because if you see here, you might have already caught it as I was writing the fprintf. But when I ran my code, my hours didn't come out quite right. And then when I look back at the code, I put the percent, but I didn't complete my placeholder by putting the percent D. So it's always important to make sure that your fprintf is working correctly. Also, I didn't put any new line backslash in in my original fprintf, but then when I ran it, I looked at the command window and decided I do want to add that in. So it's always good to look at it, get an idea of what your code looks like. Again, when you run it, you'll at least know that it works, so you'll catch errors there. But then once it does run, pay attention to what it really looks like. And then catching those fine little details helps you have even a better code. So thank you for sticking around and going through this script file with me. And if you want to write more programs together, then please be sure to subscribe and check out my MATLAB tutorial. Thanks.